everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the True Safety Podcast. I'm your co-host, Seth Silvers, and I'm here with Apollonia Rockwell. Apollonia, what is something good that's happened to you this week? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It was my daughter's second birthday. It's actually her birthday today. Amazing. And we had a celebration two days ago. So a uh, party went awesome this weekend and it's my daughter's birthday today. So Amazing. it's a really good day. Yeah. That is awesome. And she is the cutest. So I'm sure that was a lot of fun. Today, we're not going to be talking about birthdays on the <laughs> podcast. We're going to be talking about the business of safety. And to the listeners, Apollonia and I were talking kind of before we hit record and just saying like, this is a conversation that I feel like we regularly need to talk about. It's just like, why does investing in safety make sense mm -hmm. and helping um, the safety professionals that are listening to better be able to like communicate this information to your company, but also for business owners that are listening for you guys to understand that like there is a really good ROI mm -hmm. behind safety. Like it actually makes sense to spend money on safety. So um, to start Apollonia, safety can be expensive. Like talk to me about how like, like let's just like save it. It is expensive to invest in safety. Like talk to me about some of the like costs of actually investing in safety. Like if somebody's listening and they're not investing in safety, yeah. how much does it cost to like start building out a safety program, whether they're contracting it out or building it in house? Like what, what does that cost? Yeah. I mean, the few things that come straight to my mind are safety training. So I'm just going through the basics in my mind. All right. So what do I have to, if I'm an in-house safety professional and I'm having to go to my boss about a cost and what is that going to first look like? And normally it's training because as safety, even um, the best safety professionals, safety experts not always and probably shouldn't be the expert of absolutely everything of confined space, fall protection, has WAP or heavy equipment. And so since for the most part, you're not an expert in all those things, you have to at least send your employees to some of those trainings. Um, so that's a huge cost training. And then another one, um, it's a little bit give and take because of COVID time still, but this is a big one that I would always get from my boss is um, having a simple safety meeting. Uh, my my previous employer would always remind me, Apollonia, do you know how much it costs me to have the safety meeting? And I'd be like, no, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, and you have a couple hundred guys and you add up, you know, yeah. 20, 30, $40 an hour per couple hundred guys but always like, remind me yeah this is a hundred thousand dollar meeting at Polonia. this is a fifty thousand dollar meeting better be amazing no pressure uh go ahead go for it i'd be like oh great so i mean even the even just getting the employees together goodness for a company meeting um safety management software if you're if you're lucky enough to have a safety management software, which is a huge tool that I'm obsessed with, but something that can really propel your safety program, something that'll help you communicate that ROI um, to leadership or to the employer, right. that, that would be a huge cost too. So yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not, I mean, like safety managers don't get paid minimum wage. Like you can make a good living as a safety professional. Um, you know, if you're looking to hire in outside, uh, bring in consultants, so, you know, you might be looking at over a hundred dollars an hour. Like it's not an inexpensive thing and we don't want to pretend like it's not mm -hmm. now, like, let's talk about what costs come with an incident. Oh uh, this is something a lot of people, they, they might not be looking into, Hey, how much is this meeting costing me? Mm -hmm. But also we might not be looking at the full picture of what does an incident cost you. So help me understand what type of costs come with an incident. Okay. Well, the first one is the direct cost. So you, I break this up into two buckets. You have your direct costs and your indirect costs. So your direct costs are going to be the medical bills, 
you know, you're going, yes, you pay through workers comp. So your premiums are going to be um, raised every time you have a claim, right? So you have your insurance premiums. So you have the the time away from work that the employee is now taken um, because of their injury. So now to combat that, you're replacing that team member, right? So now you're having to hire right. somebody. To you're replacing them, but then you're also usually paying them to not work. Exactly. So it's yeah. like money you're spending, but you're not getting the result of like productivity. Yeah. Yes. And now you're having to scramble and shift things around and create that um, crew again, make it complete, get the job completed without that team member. Um, the, the other big one is a loss of a client. So you have an incident and let's say you're already at the threshold of your incident rate where you're pretty close to not being able to work for somebody and then boom, you have an incident. And now the companies that you're working for, the clients that you're working for won't accept your total recordable incident rate. And now they're, you know, companies have are raising their standard of the contractors they want to work with. Yeah. So you might all of a sudden not qualify for you know, a multi six or seven or multi seven figure contract where it's like, well, dang, that one small incident affected our TRIR. And now we don't qualify to apply for this $23 million bid. Right. Exactly. Because they want to work with people who are going to get the job done safely. Right. They're probably thinking, we don't want the drama. We just want somebody that'll come in here and complete yep. the job. Not somebody who's out here. And then there's, there's incidents. We have the ambulance on site. We have a fiasco going on. We're just trying to finish this project. And then the other big thing that people don't take into consideration more on the indirect costs are, um, reputation. I mean, we live in a small community, but really a lot of people live in small communities where Mm -hmm. no matter how many people you have in your town, reputation is still reputation. And when you have the reputation that um, the company might not care for their employees or they're always having accidents over there or gosh forbid, gosh forbid, an incident that happened at your company makes the, makes the uh, local newspaper or it's on social media. Um, We see that a lot, you know, I think we've shared with you articles, uh, trenching excavation gone wrong, uh, trenches collapse, and it's it's live on our lo- local news and everyone's looking at what company allowed this type of work um, to go on here in our community. So I think people are more um, aware of brand and reputation too, more than they ever have been. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true, especially in... Um, yeah, I mean, I think we've seen situations, uh, that I'm thinking of too, that I won't mention specific, but just situations where like something negative happens for a company in construction and people flock to them online. They don't even know about the company, but they're like pissed off because they read an article about something one of their employers did. And, you know, this company almost goes under because of it. Yeah. And I think, yeah. yeah, you're totally right. Like the reputation. So I think what we're saying is like some of this is how cal- you can calculate. Yeah. There's definitely very real, very expensive calculated costs. You know, your insurance is going to go up lost revenue in the future, um, lost revenue in the, you know, currently presently. Um, and there, I mean, there's the human ele- element of it too, of, you know, what is the impact of, you know, dare say somebody losing their life on a family or somebody, you know, having to deal with some kind of disability or physical impact of an injury for the rest of their life. Cause it's not just about the numbers as well. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot that goes to it. And, and even the morale, I mean, I've worked with companies that have unfortunately have experienced, um, a pretty significant injury. And I'll tell you the, the culture, as you could only imagine, but the morale during those few times, even if Seth, even if it was 
the employee saying, hey, I was injured and this is 100% my fault. I knew exactly what I was doing was wrong. I went ahead and did it anyway. The company had all the best uh, procedures and PPE and, uh, and training, mm -hmm. you know, just because there's an incident doesn't always mean the employer failed. Yep. So a lot of the times employees are like, I did something wrong. doesn't matter if an incident happens and, and it's significant, the company feels it. And it is weird. It is weird. The next couple of weeks, especially if that's somebody that you worked with closely, then um, you have a lot of distraction, a lot of distracted minds on that job site that all experience that incident, right. not just the employee. So yeah. there's a lot of human elements too. You're right to it. So yeah, absolutely. And it's hard to it's hard to put our finger on all of the costs. And I think that's why it's easy for people to say, like, well, like, you know, what's the ROI of safety? I don't really know. And this is because it's a long-term thing. It's like it's the concept of you know, would you spend $5 now to save $20 down the road? Right. Um, and I know there's been interesting studies where like, with like kids mm -hmm. where they're like, Hey, do you want, you can have one marshmallow now, or you can have two marshmallows in 10 minutes. And like yeah. most of the kids, they're like, well, I want a marshmallow now. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of the yeah. thinking is like, okay, well, like, you know, let's save the money now, or, you know, maybe let's give out bonuses or pay our shareholders or different things like that now uh, with the money we have. But then, you know, if you're not investing in safety to the level that you should, then what's that going to cost later? So how do you, when you're talking to clients, how do you get them to like, think about this in a long-term perspective? Yeah. So one thing that comes to mind is being able to communicate what the end result can look like. So I think that no matter what role you're in, if you're a safety professional, in-house consultant, it's important that you paint the vision for what the team can look like when the when employees are certified, they're trained, they're educated. Um, here's what a working safety program can look like for your company. And here's how our TRI is going to look quarter after quarter. These are the jobs that are available to us. So just being able to paint that end picture is going to be really important. And if you haven't already, I mean, it is important to try to to put together numbers as best as you can to show the ROI of safety, mm -hmm. because I think that's the biggest struggle that safety professionals have is how do we communicate our value? How do we communicate our productivity to a C-suite group um, or if it's a small company, you know, just the owners and just the management team, you're constantly facing that uphill battle of, proving what you're up to all day. And that yeah. is a, that's a, that's a real struggle for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been great. And I encourage our listeners, like really take time to think about what the ROI of safety is for your company and come up with some actual numbers. Okay. Yeah. I think, you know, we would save this much by increasing our, or decreasing our incident rate. Um, because if you're going to owners, like they want to see numbers, mm -hmm. they want to see like, how does this make business sense? And there's, there's studies out there that show that like safety does, you do get a positive ROI. You know, I, I've seen some things of like for every dollar invested in safety, you're in the long run, you're going to get two to $3 of revenue back mm -hmm. um, from that. And one plate, just one quick tip that's tangible that the, that the listeners can take home today is that if you do have historic data, then that's always, always helped me. So I have put together a cost analysis for safety. And I was thinking, how in the world do I present this to my boss? And one thing that I did was I took last year and then collectively the last three years, the incidents and I was able to work with bookkeeping to see, all right, what were, what were our insurance premiums year after year because of these incidents? What did we have to pay this employee? What did we have to, so I just pulled as, as much expenses as I could. And I was able to say, hey, these three incidents cost us $126,000 last year. And, and I'm asking, what I'm in return asking for is for us to send 50 of our employees employees through X amount of training, it's going to cost us, um, $10,000. Mm -hmm. 
can we start there? So if you have historic right. data, that's always going to help you. That's a great way to at least collect some initial data if you haven't already. Uh, is super good advice. And I was going to ask about that. So you, you read my mind. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. And again, this is a conversation we'll continue to come back to because uh, it's a question that people keep on asking. What's the ROI of safety? And I think as safety professionals, it's important to be able to um, come up with a approximate number. Yeah. Um, you know, see the financial impact that incidents and that investing in safety can have. So Apollonia, as always, thank you for sharing your insight into this topic. And to our listeners, we'll see you next time on the True Safety Podcast. See you next time. And if you are a safety professional and you have some great tips, please leave a comment on how yeah. you've been able to communicate your company's ROI of your of the safety program. How did you communicate that with C-suite? How did you communicate that with leadership owners? Um, that would be super helpful um, in the comments. It would help some other people out. So. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to know. And uh, we'll have uh, more episodes for you next week on the True Safety Podcast. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you.